Can you tell us a little bit uh, about yourself, what you've been doing before you joined the blockchain space? Um, yeah, so I spent most of my career at Qualcomm. Um, if you don't know what Qualcomm is, it's a semiconductor firm building um, mobile chips for just about every cell phone that's been out there, I think uses a Qualcomm modem um, for LTE, you know, 3G, 4G, 5G now. Um, I spent most of my career working in operating systems, firmware optimizations, things like that. When and why did you decide to join the blockchain space? Uh, so, 2017, I was actually at Dropbox at the time, working in compression. Um, and this big ICO boom happened, right? And everyone was like, oh wow, there's these projects like IOTA raising <laughs> you know, obscene amounts of money on something <laughs> that doesn't seem like will ever work. Um, so one day I had too much coffee and a beer and I was up till four in the morning and I had this idea that um, you can encode passage of time as data and once you have a source of time um, you have uh, all the optimizations that people use in wireless networks available to you. So the same reason that a wireless network can uh, like handle millions of users in one tower, um, you can now use in blockchain. So that was really kind of the inspiration for it. Can you elaborate a little bit on the idea? What do you mean by encoding time in, in data? So um, there's this technique called verifiable delay functions. And at the time, there wasn't really anyone publicly working on this, but Dan Bonet and a bunch of folks have been working on this for a while. Um, so it's a puzzle that you solve similar to proof of work, but the puzzle requires real time to solve, no matter how much compute or electricity or money you throw at it. So you actually have to spend real time based by the computational speed limit of a single core, single thread machine. Does it differ like fundamentally from proof of work or it's just another kind of proof of work? It's fundamentally different from proof of work because it's not a proof of work. It's proof of time. As in like, if you think of work as multi like work occupies space, three-dimensional space, time doesn't. So you can't use proof of time for civil resistance. You can only use it to measure time. Um, so we you still need to find some other civil resistance mechanism. But um, a lot of folks are using uh, verifiable delay functions as a source of randomness, because if uh, we bet on a number that's computed one million seconds from now, there's this guarantee that we don't know it. You know, like we have some random starting point that we agree upon, and then the output takes you know, a million seconds or 10 minutes or something like that. That gives us like a true random source. What unique about us is we don't actually use this for randomness. We are, we use it as a clock. Uh, so, so, so wait, after you had this idea, did you decide to uh, join an existing company or start your own company? Or uh, like... I definitely wanted to start my own company. So like I've been like trying to start startups ever since I started programming when I was 16. Um, I had one in college. We were building uh, Linux voice over IP boxes with like phone cards in them. Like if you ever heard of Grand Central Dispatch. Uh, so this was like 2003, like voice over IP stuff. Um, this was in central, central Illinois, so that, that failed miserably, but ended up being like working in voice over IP at Qualcomm. And coming to Solana, what is Solana and why is it, what, what makes it unique among other blockchain projects? Well, no one else is... Uh, really working on scaling layer one without sharding. We're the only project that is single single shard, single giant replicated state machine uh, that is scaled. Um, so right now our test net can do 50,000 TPS. We actually think we can totally horizontally scale it to uh, whatever the bandwidth allows. And it'll take some work, but we're getting pretty close. So. What about validation costs? I mean, can I be a validator in your system with just a, a CPU or with a laptop that no. I can buy off the shelf? No, so that's the trade-off. So validators, like if you're horizontally scaling validators, it means that they're putting more racks in the data in the co-location space. But uh, the economics of a validator, so again, the space is proto efficient, right? If we take this approach, um, we're building a validator network that is uh, higher capital expenditure. Uh, so they're obviously professional validators. If you take this like Ethereum 2.0 approach, you're trying to get a million laptops like to build a supercomputer. That's massively decentralized system. Ours is a very low latency, high performance system. Um, so obviously there's use cases that work well on ours and not on the other one.
And what is the state of the system? Are you have you been launched already? And what is the state of the project now? Um, so we are doing our uh, effectively. We're starting our version of Game Mistakes. So validators come and try to boot the network. We had uh, two dry runs that failed in about 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> why did why did they fail? Oh, uh, the first one. Uh, we're so we're UDP based network. And uh, we were assuming that the MTU paths could go up to like 64 kilobytes for the majority of the network. But when you have a bunch of people that are booting up from like behind the great firewall uh, in Africa and stuff like that, that's not true. So that was like the initial set of failovers. That was dry run zero. Dry run one, um, we didn't uh, have a good enough warm up period for stakes. So a bunch of validators booted and the, their stakes took over the network. But because we didn't have like a uh, an epoch configured yet, um, they didn't know what the super majority set was. So like warm up, warm up issues, stuff like that. Fun bugs. <laughs> now you are preparing for the next launch, or you have? Yeah, a... actually, dry run three is on this tomorrow, so we'll see. Oh, <laughs> good luck. Good luck with that. I mean, the, this is kind of the point of game mistakes, right? Is you boot the network until you can't stop it, and then then you're done. So as soon as we can't crash it then it's main now. And probably the last question, we're here in Berlin, Web3 Summit. How do you like the event? How do you like the city? Uh, so, um, I haven't had a chance to really enjoy the event, but the city is amazing. It it, it's like a really cool city. If I had a, a, a second city to live in, like so far, Berlin would be in the top choice right there. Thank you very much. Yeah, of course.